and the celebration now of a hide-and-seek game on 4th, which is due to begin its fourth series in a week's time. As a curtain raiser, we now present another chance to see the making of Treasure Hunt. Turn a living, eh? What a way indeed. Treasure Hunt has consistently been one of Channel 4's most popular programmes. But how does Annika Rice communicate with Kenneth Kendall and the studio-based contestants while jumping in and out of her helicopter and flying from clue to clue? Does she know where she's going? How are the locations chosen? And how is the show prepared and recorded? Well, the first thing we do um, when choosing locations is we, we look at the map. And then we uh, check out interesting historical, artistic, geographical points. And then having chosen that, a particular area, we then go and wreck it. We've got to deal really in a 25 mile radius, because the helicopter can fly at roughly a mile a minute. So we can only really deal with a 25 mile radius. And then work out, uh, within that radius, clues that are going to give a maximum of six minutes flying time in between because we can't really have, a, have anything longer than six minutes. That's actually quite difficult sometimes, but it is surprising in this country how many interesting places there are. Then we go out on the, the recce and we recce it out, um, sort out permissions, talk to the people involved, see whether they're happy to have us. And I mean, generally, most people are. And we very, very rarely ever get turned down for a location. Very rarely. And they're usually thrilled, thrilled to have us there. Um, then having done that, we then do a helicopter recce, uh, which I do with Keith. I get involved in uh, programme planning at a very early stage. Um, this year we've been going since about January, February, with potential ideas of each location, looking at Auden survey maps, deciding routes, uh, landing sites, and uh, if any sites had changed, then there's a very close link up. Is this going to be okay? Do you foresee any problems from my point of view? So at a very early stage, we're, we're involved. On the shoot, which we do during August, everything has got to run really smoothly because we're doing one show every two days. So the planning for a series like Treasure Hunt is phenomenal. It takes about five months to plan 13 shows. And the, the essence of the success of it, getting through it without any accidents and, and making good shows, is really down to the planning. The planning continues even on the day before recording. The location crew arrive at the base site and the two helicopters used in recording the program fly around the course checking the landing sites and communication system. Malcolm Hayworth takes the place of Annika Rice and checks out the route she should take tomorrow if the contestants guide her correctly. One of the very important things is to check out the timing. The other extremely important, perhaps the most important, is the safety aspects. Because I've got to be sure that there's nothing potentially dangerous that Annie could fall over into, onto, uh, or Graham could break his leg, or some problem in that respect. I've got to be very, very sure that there's no obstacles or nothing that can be potentially dangerous that can um, hurt them. I'm sorry, we got a bit delayed this morning, and uh, as I said, we had these trams to sort out. Malcolm meets the officials at each site and confirms the arrangements for tomorrow, also okay. ensuring that they won't assist Annika unless she asks them for help. Frank Maborough and Graham Berry, who will be filming Annika, check their route for possible obstacles. Now, this will be the route up, won't it, to the Long Gallery? Yes. To come up here, oh dear, this is going to be a hard run up for you, Graham. The communication link is checked for each site, and a test signal from the studio in London is fed by British Telecom landline to the van on location, where it's beamed up to the communication helicopter flying above the Skyrunner. 
Here, the signal is monitored and filtered. I'm still getting a load of shock in my ears. And then beam back down on a different frequency to the runner pack on Malcolm's chest. The voice of the runner to the studio is beamed along the reverse path in exactly the same way. Ah, oh. well, Grace, I'm so sorry to right. you be late. I must apologise. Right, so Annie will come in here, identify the little boy as the Duke of Rutland, as he now is, and you will have the clue. Now, what we have to decide is where you're going to be. Now, where would you normally? Would it be with Mr. Webster, or perhaps with your gardener, or...? I think I'd better be with Mr. Webster. Mr. Mr. Webster. But where are they? Where? That's the thing. But, I mean, I don't quite understand it. If, who, who, she's going to come in here. She runs in here by herself. She's, she's, she runs in here by herself. She's yes. got to identify, with the help of the contestants... I'm not... We're not here. I'm no, you're not here. No, no. OK? Yes. Once she's identified who that yes. is... Yes, ...then she will have to come and find you. Yes. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, a lonely figure sits on the terrace, catching up on her diary. It's the only member of the team not involved in the rehearsal, Annika Rice. My only brief on rehearsals day is to stay completely out of everyone's way. In fact, during the whole treasure hunt shoot, I've become used to becoming a total recluse. I feel like a leper, actually. From the moment I get up until about five o'clock in the afternoon, I don't see any of the others, and I'm not allowed to try and look for them. Though I've got a vague idea of the area immediately around the hotel, I haven't made any effort at all to find out anything more about Derbyshire. I don't even have my map yet. That's given to me later on this evening. Um, no clues at all. And as I said, it's almost nicer that I know nothing. Um, the crew are very good at it. The first series, the tension was so awful whenever I walked into the room because they were sure they were going to let something slip. And I'd walk into a room and it was... <laughs> and they went rigid, absolute rigid, with fear that they'd let something loose. No, she will, she will take the clue off you and give you, and and give you a kiss, and then she will read it out to the contestants who she's speaking to in the studio in London, oh, through her headphones here, OK? Yeah. And then she'll say, thanks very much, and she'll be off. I see. And, and we just have the one, I mean, nothing can go wrong anyway, is it? No, no, no not at all. But of course, it isn't live anyway, is it? It's, it's not live, no, but it's, it's live in the sense that it's, it's recording exactly oh, yes. the time, and what happens is what happens. No, that's right. Once all the participants are briefed, the crew travel to the next location. OK, Keith, we're going to take off in a moment. Each of the runs back to the helicopter is timed and added to the flying time from clue to clue to make sure the total time for the course is possible for the contestants. I reckon now, having with the experience we've gained, that roughly 38, 39 minutes, me knowing exactly where the clues are is the right length for the show, giving the contestants roughly six minutes to go wrong. And that, that's worked because um, we've had, on the last series, we had it was five out of 12 winners, five out of 12, which is, which is a nice balance. Meanwhile, 2,000 feet above the Skyrunner helicopter, the signal is still being monitored in the communication helicopter, and Jeff Newman stays in constant touch with air traffic control. At the location of another clue, a stately home open to the public, Malcolm is worried by the large numbers of people so near to the helicopter. So often when you land helicopters, you get many people come out of the woodwork and have trees out of bushes. It's just amazing. And so you've got to be sure that there's, uh, there's maybe there's somebody around, you know, who we can use on the day just to stand and make sure people don't come onto the landing position. I've just got to make sure that uh, this is safe because there's so many people around. I'm just going to hang on until um, Keith stops the rotors. Anyway, that's good comms. That's lovely comms. Now, I think, I tell you what, I think that the window, let me just ask this, um, just keep an eye on that tail rotor. Um, can you tell me that where the, um, the violin is. Which which yeah. side of the house is it? On the, so that we can it's position. On, it's on the east side. It's this uh, side it's here. The south side. On that side, but the entrance door is on the east. The side. entrance door is here, but it's facing that way. That's right. Yeah. Right, Jeff. In comms, you're positioned brilliantly. Once the rehearsal is finished, the crew return to the hotel to check the recording and discuss any problems encountered, particularly with communications. 
I'm just getting a load of shat on this. <laughs> yes, I can hear you. <laughs> this word shash um, is so full meaningful. Of shash, uh, and it's, it's, it's very, very descriptive shash. The word shash <laughs> explains exactly what it is. Shash. <laughs> 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 yeah. That evening, Annika is allowed to rejoin the team for dinner, and while everyone is on their guard so as not to give anything away, the conversation inevitably returns to the subject of shash. You were there, you were there. I didn't have fried eggs on the line again. They were really good. Actually, Annie, Annie, there was mountains of vegetables in the word. This year, the in word for pistol and mussel on the pistol and mussel is shash. Pistol and mussel, I like pistol and mussel. That's not my 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 pistol and which was no, super comms, Nigel. Nigel. Listen, I've wind up some jokes apart. I think we had a very good rehearsal today, and I potentially got a super show tomorrow. So, um, mm. good luck. Great. Okay. Great. Time we start what time? tomorrow, Mel. Time? Um, hello, Annie. It's 11. And comms at 12.30. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Nigel. Can't hear you. Nine thirty on the day of recording in Derbyshire, Cliff gives the helicopters their pre-flight checks. While in London, Gary and Ken, today's contestants, arrive at Limehouse. In the studio, the director, floor manager, and cameramen run through the camera positions. Would someone like to pretend to be contestants? Once the recording gets underway, everyone must be clear what they're doing, as there'll be no chance for a second attempt. At the hotel, Malcolm and Graham Berry, who won the 1984 Cameraman of the Year Award for his work on Treasure Hunt, go through the same procedure, as Graham will be on his own once the show starts. Through the door. Worry about the pot, worry about all those steps. <laughs> I know, yeah. But I went into the pothole yesterday. Yes, I, I thought the... you'd done, it, done your ankle. Break your leg, break your leg. People go around digging holes for me. Mm. 9.45. Kenneth Kendall arrives at Limehouse and goes to makeup. OK, and go, Jeremy. And you, Kenneth. Hello, to and welcome morning. to this week's treasure hunt. Here with me in London are Gary Bevan and, and Kenneth Wilkins. And they'll be guiding out our sky runner, Annika Rice, oh, around the course, as yet we know not where. Hello. Which way are you routing then? Pilots Keith and Jeff confirm their planned routes and the possible emergency landing sites if the contestants direct Annie wrongly. Mm, and also with that possibility in mind, the helicopter's fuel is worked out to allow a healthy safety margin. We're actually going to do something now. We're actually going to do it. Ten o'clock. Annika prepares to don the runner pack that links her to the studio. I like this. This is beautiful. The idea of this is that the back's very detailed so that the viewer doesn't concentrate on, you know, that. Oh, thing. Oh, no, I don't like it. Well, if you don't run too fast, I won't either. <laughs> 10.15, the contestants go into makeup. We're going to go from uh, shot 19. So come... I haven't got on camera cards. Ah, oh, you haven't got on camera cards. This year's adjudicator is TVAM's Wincy Willis, and she's the only person in the studio who knows the answers to the clues. What happens is that once the map is opened, then Kenneth will say, right, Wincy, can you tell us something about the area? You've got one of these, too. Mm. Really smart. I've got one of these, too. So, I can go in that. The runner pack with its headphones and microphone Hello, is fitted to Annika and her map folded to reveal today's hunting ground. Right, so quite a bit tight to Yep. Adjusted for Malcolm. Oh God, no wonder it's so enormous. <laughs> Ten twenty, Kenneth Kendall arrives on the studio floor. He still has no idea whether Annika will be in Tottenham or Timbuktu. The two contestants, like Kenneth, are fitted with radio microphones so that they can talk to Annika and earpieces so they can hear her as she runs about. These will be their only links, as they won't be able to see the pictures being recorded on location. Chris Gage, the studio director, has a last talk with Kenneth and the contestants. Thank you. Remember to keep looking up and uh, make as much use of the map as you want to and move around as much as you want to. OK, and enjoy it. The main thing is to enjoy it. OK. 10.30, the helicopters take off and head for the start position. 
helicopter contacts air traffic control and confirms today's intended locations. Okay, thank you very much. 10.40, Annika's in position and the studio is ready. The crew start recording. Can we roll, Frank? OK, we're rolling. Right. Heath is taking off. They're recording in the studio. We're on our way, Chat. We're going. Q, uh, Jeremy. And Q... Go. Hello, and welcome to another treasure hunt. This week I have with me in the studio Gary Bevan and Ken Wilson. Three on two next. And they're going to try and guide Annika Rice, our fearless star sky runner, around a course, which at the moment we know nothing about. Take one. We're in the Derbyshire Peak District this week. We're on Alport Heights on National Trust ground. It's incredible, actually, to think that 17 million people, that's a third of the whole population of Britain, actually live within 50 miles of the Peak District. Um, it's actually, this district is one of the most visited national parks in the world. Um, I'll better tell you where exactly we are on the map, because I know uh, about this time you start panicking, Kenneth, don't you? <laughs> it's now revealed to you. We're about five miles south of Matlock. Can you see that? And Allport Heights, you can see, is a sort of view point, if you know your ordnance survey signs. In the communications van on location, Malcolm monitors the incoming and outgoing sound. Nigel Tilbury is worried about Annika's signal. Fluctuate, it's rubbish. What height are you at? 1,700. Yeah, it's very poor. What happens if you go down? Going down. So, don't watch this meter. But once Annika is airborne, her signal improves, and the contestants guide her round the course, arriving at the third clue with only three or four minutes lost in thinking aloud time as they work out the answer. Lovely. Annie, we've got no plan of the hall, so we can't direct you to the long gallery. Well, somebody must know where it is. <coughs> um, and I wonder if it's that door or that door. Which is the best way in? Right, this way. I presume it's up here. <coughs> right, we're just uh, going through a maze of little wooden doors. Isn't this fantastic? I'm glad it's probably going to be up on the first floor. <laughs> well, I think it's on the first floor. First floor. Because in this one, it says the steps off the long gallery down the street. Yeah. Well, we're going I think when you get into the main entrance of it, just simply ask somebody for the long gallery, <coughs> which is probably upstairs. Oh, right. Here's an entrance at long gallery. Oh, my God. Right. Right, hello. Do you know where the long gallery is? Long gallery? Where is it? This is the long gallery. Fireplace. Um, this could be it. There's a painting over yes. the fireplace. I've had the hall with the two boys. Can I go through? The ninth? Hmm? Um, I don't know whether I'm allowed. Is there a door in the room? This is Annie, say your grace. No, I think, you, I think it's the Duke. I think the Duke. Annie, say your grace. Say your grace. Say your grace. Your grace. Is this the present Duke? Is this the present Duke? Oh, well, your grace. <laughs> oh. Dead nothing. <laughs> is, this, is this the Duke of Rutland? <laughs> I think that's... Where's the is Duke it, of Rutland? Is there nobody there? There's a real man. Well, that's <laughs> the Duke. Ask him his name. Mr. Rutland, I mean, not Mr. 
Rattler. What do you... <laughs> Duke of Rattler. You're great. You're great. Are you the Duke of Rattler? You're great. Hi, Hello. Nice to you. Thank you. Yeah. Where did you get to? All right. She's got the key. Have you got a clue for you? Thank you so much. Have you got a clue? I've got a clue for you. In the control room at Limehouse, Chris Gage continues to direct the studio as they prepare to give a timing check to the contestants. Give me a wider shot, include the map, please. Higher shot angle, looking down, that's nice. And four. And do a Titan. We think you've got to go to Bakewell. On three, please, to Bakewell. Two, give me a close shot of Kenneth. OK, it's hold it there on four, no further in. Can I give it time? One, give me Wincy. Take two. Gonna give a timing cue, all right? <laughs> one, take one. In you go on that. Less than eight minutes, Wincy. Less than eight minutes to go. Once the show has been recorded, the elements must be combined in an edit suite. This is the first opportunity for Chris and Malcolm to see exactly what happened at the other end on the day of recording. Okay, and then go straight back. Right. Actually, it could have been a bit. Yeah, it could have been a bit. It could have been a bit earlier, couldn't it? All right. Yeah. Okay. Just take ten frames back and say. Because I don't think Annie's actually picked that up yet. <laughs> but she's got to find the Duke. Back. No. Well, Andy looks more exhausted than I was. <laughs> right, I think this is the last one. I can't believe one. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, I love That's that. A nice picture, but, yeah, it looks great in the background, in the background yeah. yeah. Are, are you in the building no, yet? We're just running up almost. Uh, it's so funny, it's having nice been on... frustration here. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's quite strange having been on the wreckies and seeing it all and then actually seeing it, what really happens yeah. with us. Because you saw the studio and I always see the location. Yeah. And, Did uh, you imagine the, the contestants time. like that? Yeah. Well, they always look different to their sound. They always come across completely different the way I visualise them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, you want to take that one in the wind seat? I th right. Well, I'm just wondering if we should try and go back to them. Ah, uh, look, we should certainly go back there. Yeah, okay. yeah. Let's go back right. to that one. Okay. Um, I think you could have gone a bit earlier yeah, and could then go back. I mean, cause we just they are actually saying, they're actually asking a question, is there anything? Okay. <laughs> Once the sequence for the third clue is completed, this is what it looks like. Yes, and it's there. Oh, right. Here's an entrance at Longrath. Oh, my God. It's hot in here. Right. Right, hello. Do you know where the Long Gallery is? Long Gallery? Where is it? This is the Long Gallery. Fireplace. Um... There's a painting over the yes. fireplace. Of Haddon Hall with the two boys. Can I go through? The ninth, hmm? Um, I don't know whether I'm allowed. Is there a door in the Yeah, where it says Annie, say your grace. Could there be no, a I think, you, I think it's the Duke. I think the Duke. Annie, say your yes. grace. Say your, your grace. Say your grace. Yeah. Your grace. Is this the present Duke? Is this the present Duke? Oh, well, your grace. Oh. Dead nothing. <laughs> is, this, is this the Duke of Rutland? Uh, I think that's... Where's is the Duke there, of Rutland? Is there nobody there? There's a real man! Well, that's <laughs> what the name. Ask him his name. Mr. Rutland? I mean, it's not Mr. Rutland. What you... <laughs> Duke Your of Rutland. Your Grace. Your Grace. Are you the Duke of Rutland? Your Grace. Oh, hello. hello. Nice you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Where did you get to? All right, she's got well, the key. Have you got a clue for you? Thank you so much. Have you got a clue? I've got a clue for you. There we are. Oh, are thank you? you so much. Well, here we are. Right. Well, now you know how it's done. That programme from Derbyshire was part of the last series of Treasure Hunt. And on Boxing Day at 7 o'clock, a special programme from Florida starts a new series here on 4. Well done anyway. Such beautiful countryside, isn't it? It really is lovely. Oh, it'll well, look lovely. It looked right, did it? It looked yeah. really nice. Well, well done. Very good. Very good show. It was great. Well done, man. The remark of the day, as I went into Chatsworth, some old lady came up and said, we saw the dummy run yesterday. And I said, that's no way to talk about our producer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.